Tommy, postseason logistical issues mean we have to do this over Zoom, but thank you very much for joining me for a little bit of a chat to go over what's been a brilliant season for the shots and, and maybe even look ahead to what could be another brilliant season next year. I mean, if we can throw it all the way back to around this time last year when, when we began looking at, at pre-season last year, I guess, what were your thoughts going into the the 23 24 season obviously it was a new group wasn't it it was it was quite a lot of change but did you did, did you have those hopes and expectations that that resulted in what we we got in the end or was it well let's just see what happens well, i think there's always a little area of trepidation anticipation hope um but i think i'd seen in the certainly in the six week period of pre-season when we got a group together um after the six-game period I'd, I'd had when I first arrived, I could see there was improvement on the pitch. I could see that there was a structure of the football club behind me. Um, and obviously, I was well aware of the fan base from previous seasons and what have you. So I thought the ingredients were always there to improve on what was happening before me. And I, like I said, I never, I never criticised the person in my position or the club's um, approach to things before I got there because it's none of my business. I, I, I didn't have anything to do with that. Uh, what I did know is I thought we had a really energetic, young, vibrant squad that were going to try and play the football that was most comfortable for them as individuals and therefore as a collective. And we're big as a staff on having everybody wanting to do the same thing. And, and I think I, I put some sort of ground rules in fairly early on that everybody has to adhere to. There's no there's no black and white in them ground rules. And and that's that's for everybody, but staff, players, even people above me. I I I work, you know now, I work in a certain way that I'm I'm very um, methodical and I'm very precise in certain certain things, but I'm also very wavy with other rules. And I let people, you know, I let people push the rules, but if they start breaking them, then it's it's uh <laughs> there's 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 issues there for us, but I think everybody joined with joined me. I mean, who joined me, staff and players, at the beginning of the journey. I just thought they were the right the right group, and as as it turned out, they they came up trumps more often than they didn't for us. Well, when you look at our pre season that we had, there were some great results in there. I mean, we played very well against Wickham, who have obviously gone on to have a good season in League One. We we played very well against Sutton as well. They've obviously not been as fortunate on the pitch this season, but they're still a team in the league above. And again, there's the the great results against Chelsea youngsters as well, and 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 against lower teams as well. We did quite well, and then we moved to the first game of the season, and and wow, that was a brilliant performance in front of our fans. Was was that a bit of a moment when you thought? Wow. Okay. This this squad could do something really good this year. Um. Firstly, I'll just walk you back a little bit in terms of the the, the results in the preseason games. Whilst they're always handy if you, you keep on getting positive results, it's performance and length of performance, levels of performance from each individual is monitored and planned meticulously by by the staff behind me with Hugo, Rich, Brad, and Liam. Um. So. We were really pleased with the way pre-season went until the 31st minute in the game against Wickham when, unfortunately, Christian, you know, went down like a sack and we, we, we later found out he ruptured his Achilles tendon. So that was the huge disappointment for me in the pre-season. You're always going to get the odd lad get a niggle here or, a, you know, a little whack there, whatever it is. Lauren getting sent off in for Farmer was a little concerning because we didn't fully know him character-wise there. We'd been told there was maybe a question mark or two about his character. <laughs> so there was one or two things that raised an eyebrow or so, um, but but only only to the point of an Ancelotti eyebrow. It was only one eyebrow, it wasn't two. So... so I was really pleased with the way things went. I know Hugo, I've worked with Hugo a long time and he has a huge part in the planning of our pre-seasons. And whilst I'm a little bit more, um, I wouldn't say old school, I'd say good school in that I sometimes think we could be a little bit more robust in training. He's very, very meticulous, working hand in hand with the medical and the, and the science lads. And it's <clears throat> I'm really pleased with the way it, where it went. The first game was, you always want to put your flag out at home the first, the first home game, and again, I think that was almost a, a real snapshot of how our season was going to turn out. Because the ecstasy of scoring five goals, but the disappointment for me that we that we conceded two, the manner in which we conceded the two, were very, very naive. 
and and I, that's that seemed to be a theme throughout the season. Not so much the the person or the people who made the mistakes on that day recurring all the time, but as a group, we just didn't remedy that weakness. And it is a weakness to be able to give goals up as readily as we did. On the flip side of that, them lads who were on the pitch when we were conceding goals were the same lads that were on the pitch when we were winning convincingly. So, like I said, I always take it, you know, the rough with a smooth or sweet with a sour, whatever you want to call it. Um, but the first game, it gave me, it gave me not that I need any as a, as an individual, but it gave me a little bit more reassurance that we were on the right tracks. The fact that we went and got walloped up at Oldham was a false result, in my opinion, because there were two or three huge incidents in that game. We knew the official done was going to be different this season. We didn't know what that meant until about five or six games in. We certainly found out early on because we were we were on the back of some really strange and unusual decisions that wouldn't have probably happened the season before. So add to that the added time at half time, the added time at the end. You know, on average, I think this season a player like Oli Harfield is a great example. His average minutes per game, because he played every game, has been over 100 minutes a game. Now, that's crackers. 46 league games and whatever we did, cup games, six or seven, eight cup games. If you work that out, he's probably played a season and a quarter in, in the one season, which statistically is phenomenal. Um, physically is phenomenal as well. You know, you, it's a yeah. testament to how he's been prepared. And like I said, I don't want to give Hugo too much credit, but that that's all about preparation. And he's the only one that managed to do that. So, yeah, um, the start was great. The day, um, the day itself against Oxford was was brilliant, and I, I got a feel for the um, for the positivity that had returned with the fans, um, and I was delighted with the first game of the season, obviously. Well, to go into more about that positivity with the fans, it was one of the key targets, wasn't it, this season to to win more at home. I mean, we've, we've you know everyone seems to know about the struggles we've had over the last four or five years at home, and it's it's not been a very good record at all. So we needed to to win more games at home this year, and and I think we did that very very well. I think it was uh, off the top of my head. I think just four losses at home this season. And, that's that's a fantastic record, and and it, that that became quite apparent early on, didn't it? I mean, I think it was before Eastie came to us, just before Christmas. It was only one loss at home, and that was against Chesterfield in what was a very promising performance from the team. So, so, so talk us through those home games. Was it? Were you, were you telling the players to, to 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 you know give it a bit more at home because that's what is so important to the fans, or was it just kind of a natural thing that the players came to? I think what's really important is we don't ask them to do something different on a Saturday to what we've been doing Monday to Friday. Because if you're going along and a constant message is being given to the players and the way we want to set up, the way we want to play, the way we want to stop the opposition from playing, that might be because we want to keep the ball more than more than not. We might want to press them higher than what we would another team. All these factors are worked out before the before the week leading into the, the games that we play. And I think the, co- the group that we have have been really coachable. I've got really good coaches and assistants beside me. And I think the, del- the message that we deliver has been consistent, literally from, not just from the Oxford game, from the Bad Shot League game, staffed as that sounds, where none of the first team players played. The same chat was given to them lads as given to, you know, the first team group once they started kicking into their games. So the fact that most of our players... In fact, nearly all of our players have had a decent grounding at some, you know, high level of the academy pyramid, let's say, then they're all coachable. And some listen more than others. Some are a little bit more individual than others, but that's what makes a good football team, you know. And and ultimately, I'm a big believer in you, you've got to let people express themselves, but they've got to express themselves within a structure that is beneficial to everybody. And on the whole, I think we've we've... We've had a group this season that is really, really adhered to that. You know, some would love to have expressed themselves more. Some um, might have felt, well, it's not quite the way I've played before, but you know what? This is actually making me a more rounded player or a better player or a more, you know, I don't like pigeonholing players and say he has to play there or he, he can only play there. I think if you look around the squad, there's Tyler Frost, Ryan Glover, Ollie Harfield, Dylan Kaji, who came in on loan. 
you know, we use these lads in different positions. Josh Stokes has played as a, as a 10, he's played as a nine, he's played as an eight. You know, so all of these, all of these um, little things that people probably don't look into on a weekly basis because quite rightly, the fans and everybody who comes to watch us want to know what the result is and did we win, did we win, did we win? But we look at things because I think as a manager and as a football club, our job is to win as many football matches as we can and try and be successful. But also, as a business, we've got to run a model that we aren't at the top of the tree, so we've got to possibly pass people up there. And if we do that, we, we make a better business model for the club. Again, I don't know what went on before me, but while I'm here, I'll always look to have a good balance between players who know and can play the level and players who will be given a platform, probably because they haven't been given a platform yet at this level, or they're coming down quite quickly from a very, very high level. Now, that's that's three very different types of players. So, like I said, if, if you've got, you know, let's say Tom, Dick and Harry from all three different backgrounds, they might well have been given very, very different information about themselves and how to play the game at the varying clubs. But when they come into ours, I could tell you now, Tom will know Dick's job, Dick will know Harry's job, and Harry will know Tom's job. So I like the, I like the, I like my left wing back to know what our high sided right forward should be doing when he's got the ball, and vice versa. So there's no excuses. We're in no excuse culture in our dressing room. So we don't blame, you know, any outside factor. When we get into that dressing room at two o'clock on a Saturday or a quarter to seven on a Tuesday or Wednesday, the outside noise become silent. All that matters is the information we've given them, both audibly and visibly, with the video meetings and stuff, we show them the opposition traits, their strengths and their weaknesses. But come when the comes push comes to shove, the people who go out onto the pitch know they're the starters. It doesn't make them better than the, the lads on the bench. The lads on the bench are the finishers. And the lads who don't get picked, they get an again opportunity the next week or the week after. And I've got to say, I've not had one player this season yet. I've had loads come knock on my door asking, you know, I need to play. I think I should play. Brilliant. Love that. I don't want them all to be sitting there going, yes, boss, no boss, three bags full boss. But none of them have shown such a disappointment and disrespect to their teammate. And I think that is a testament to the group. Yeah, it was a great group, wasn't it? They they really did get on with their jobs well. They, it always looked from the outside at least, and I'm sure, as you're saying, they're the inside as well, that mm. they, they got on really well and they did they did support each other. Um, and I think one of the reasons that helped that was the FA Cup run, wasn't it? That obviously boosts morale. That's the thing yeah. that everyone wants to know the inside bit about because that was just a fantastic thing for the club, wasn't it, as a whole? I mean... Yeah. The the the, uh, the revenue that comes in the the fact we took five thousand fans up to the Hawthorns the, the, the creating FA Cup history at at Swindon and, and winning on the cameras at BBC I think we did almost everything didn't we it was it was fantastic wasn't it yeah I mean firstly the, the Swindon game we were quietly confident that we were going to have a game with, with Swindon and we could give yeah. him a game because I think the makeup of their squad if you look at it you look at it when we played them wasn't that dissimilar to ours a lot of lads who played in academy or development football at a higher level than League Two. Now, we're only one league apart, so them lads were probably taking their first team shirts for the first time this season, or maybe it's their second season. So there wasn't a huge difference in the, the demographic of the squad. It wasn't far to go, so we weren't going to be you know tired or anything like that, but the FA Cup is the FA Cup. And it always throws up a weird and wonderful result. Now, if you'd asked me, did I think we could win? I would have said, yes, I think we can win the game. Am I sure we're going to win the game? I don't know, because I don't know how Swindon are going. But we didn't allow Swindon to get started. And I think, <clears throat> well, I know they were shell-shocked because we had a chat with with Mickey and Wayne after the game. And they were so complimentary. It was, I mean, he even rang me back again as I was driving home along the M4. And he was on the phone for an hour going, how on earth did that happen? <laughs> so, <clears throat> you know, we the players take all the credit for that. I mean, they just, again, they, they performed what we were asking them to do multiple times very early in the game and we got success from it on that day whether it's luck whether it's fortune whatever you want to call it more went in than didn't and I mean <clears throat> the, the again I'll take this one squarely on the chin in terms of it shouldn't have been 7-4 but I think 7-4 is a a score it's not the first time I've been in a game with 7-4 but, <laughs> but but 7-4 will go that the seven goals goes down in history 153 years the competition has been played. 
I'm I'm telling you that will not get broken. That that non-league, I hate that word, non-league team scoring seven goals against an EFL team, it won't be broken in my lifetime. Um, so then boys will put themselves in the annals of history of, a, of the oldest competition in cup, cup competition in the world. And older shot town are that. They are we are older shot town. So we are in the, the annals of history. Nobody can take that away from any of the players, staff, fans, the workers, the volunteers of our football club. And that is a legacy that, I, that I'm yes. really proud of, if I'm honest. Cut to the next game in the Stockport game. We knew Stockport were a very, very good side. I mean, they've, they've, they've gone on to win the league comfortably above us, you know. Um, but I th- I did feel our best chance was going to be at home. Um, and I thought we started the game, got a little bit of fortune with, with Josh's first goal. Um, and they've scored a hell of a second. They've scored a hell of an equaliser. And then they, they had their spell on top where they went, to, went ahead. Um, but again, the lads showed great character. And for us to... I thought deservedly get an equaliser. Yeah. Um, that was brilliant, you know. So to, to get the replay, which wouldn't happen, I'm hearing going forward at this moment in time. Uh, but they're they're in there, being on the TV, then going back up to Stockport. Probably not a lot of people, other than people who travel with us and now have supporters who've watched on TV. Not a lot of people in the outside of Aldershot would have given us much of a chance. But again, we didn't see it as a high priority for them. Because of where they were in their league, um, so again we had a we had a free hit up there, and I thought it it was a really good solid performance. Um, they dominated the ball for long spells, but I thought we controlled where they dominated the ball. And if you watch the goal back that we scored, what I loved about that goal was as it once it left the thrower's arms, there was seven challenges in the box, and we won all seven of them, and. If we could take that to the other box, then we wouldn't have conceded the goals we conceded this season. But in that little passage of play, the ball is between us and them on six occasions, and then Ollie splats it in the goal. And again, he's put himself in you know the history of the football club, getting us to the third round. But the the reaction from the players is in that one goal is probably my favourite picture that I've seen this season because the the, not relief, it's almost like joy. It's like a, a, an outpouring of joy from Scotty, Haji, Kwame, the people who are in and around the ball, and then, then the celebration with the fans afterwards. And again, being live on the box is an added bonus for the football club. But um, them two games will, will live long, <clears throat> long in my memory. And of course, the occasion of a West Brom, we had to put our sensible hats on here. Yeah? And we said, you know, we could go there and try and do what most teams do against like a Man City because that's the difference you know the levels between West Brom and ourselves we're, we're not daft we know but you know it's 11 men we 11 men there's a ball in the middle and I and I felt but for the two we made two really poor errors for two goals you know we we misheaded a ball in our own box that fell to their lad after hitting one of our players and he stuck it in the goal and I think one of the lads stood on the ball as he was receiving it. And the guy's technically really proficient, never really does that very often. And we give him two goals. So the game went away from us very quickly. And I'm not stupid. They they, they did they did take their foot off the gas a little bit the second half. But I thought we showed a real good version of ourselves in the second half up there. We moved the ball well. And I was really proud. I mean, the, the, the fact that we filled that end and they'd not had that end filled this season at all, by a championship club, yeah, they made on the last game of the season, but I've got pictures all over my house with of that because I've played at all levels of the game, Sam, and it's very, very rare you get that type of support in any game. In any game, a they don't usually let you, and b not that many people want to come. So for the for the town to come out for us that day, just it got us right in here, I think, that all of us, you know, we stayed out there for probably 15 minutes. Yeah. If we could, we would have stayed out there longer. It was, it was just, that was a memorable, memorable occasion. And I think the lads, again, like I said, we finished the game the best way possible. We got the, we got a goal. Ollie on his debut, would, would you believe? So, yeah, I mean, the magic the magic of the FA Cup was definitely sprinkled on us this season. The three, and don't forget, we, we had to get by Lewis at the beginning, and yeah. which has been a difficult task for old shots. So, the fact that we, I thought we swept them aside quite quite well in the first um, in the in the fourth qualifying round. Sorry, um, the FA Cup run 
couldn't really have been much better than it was. So if you're asking me, will that happen again next year? <laughs> my, my response would be, I would love something similar to happen like that because that brings different things to the club. But um, yeah, that, that was a journey I've played and I've got to the, the quarterfinals myself uh, before being knocked out in the replay. Uh, but I think that that surpasses that. I mean, the year, the year before I was at a level lower with Kings Lynn and we got to one, we got to uh, round two uh, and, and we're beaten by Stevenage. But I, without a doubt, it, it, my, in my uh, career as a manager and as a player, that probably is, is a real highlight for me. That's it, isn't it? I mean, we talk about the Swindon, the Stockport and the West Brom game, obviously, because it was so special. But I think the Lewis one was was a, is special in its own right as well, because when you, again, looking at the modern history of the club, we, we struggled to get past those early rounds of, of any cup competition, really. So to get a real potential banana skin like, like Lewis there, where, you know, I think it was 1-0 up, weren't we? And that was like nerves of Nerves are gone, and then they got it back to one all, and and suddenly those nerves are there again, maybe. So for then Laurent to get a hat trick as well, that was special. So, and 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 that kind of brings us, me into the next question of looking at those targets that kind of were set, really the home record, a bit of a cup run, and 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 that really we exceeded them, didn't we? Well, we we ticked the boxes because, as you said, we're home form through the middle and then the latter part of the season was really good. I mean, the, the the teams that came to us that I felt we really performed well against were the teams in and around us. We For some reason, we seem to have a, a thing about, with all due respect, teams that were struggling at the time, we played them, tend to revitalise themselves against us and kick on again. I remember Phil going in at Kidderminster. We were his first game. We were 2-0 up. He's energised them somehow and we've given them a, you know, a... a a leg up into the game and they've turned it around and went seven games unbeaten. You know, so there was, a, there was a few of them, to be honest with you. So we had a few strange moments, a few strange results, um, disappointing results, which, again, I accept we're going to have losses. I accept we're going to have days where it just doesn't work or the opposition is just better than you. But like I said, in general, the FA Cup was a definite huge tick in the box. Um, the home form, a huge tick in the box, but I people said, Oh, if you're away from was this, or if you know, <clears throat> there's only three teams in the league that we didn't beat this season, and I'll let you work them out, but I know who they are. One of them won the league, and one of them got relegated, so and the other one was bang in the middle. So, from that point of view, I know that group that we had this season could, could win. It's like me playing a golf course, I could par every hole, but I'm probably not going to do that on the same day. And we could be every team, but we're not going to do that every time we turn up against them in one season. So the logic in that is, and the mindset from me is, we know we're on the right track because we went to town and went nose to nose against Chesterfield and come out, you know, very much just short, just short. Then um, a lot of teams we dominated the ball and therefore won the game by dominating the ball. Others we controlled quite well. The gate said game away. They'll think they controlled that game, but we controlled them because the, a silly statistic is they had five touches in our box. We had 25 touches in their box, but they had 70% of the ball. So people want to throw statistics at you and say, oh, mm. you know, well, you got you got battered, but you won 1-0. Well, that's how you want to look at it. But the other stat is how many goals did they score and how many goals did we score? And I'm, I'm using data, which everybody will think I'm having a go. I'm not. It's just what was the game most recently in my head that was completely opposite to the way we usually set up. We set up in a different shape because we knew they're very good on the ball, good, good technicians, and they just are very, very patient, probably the most patient team in the division. So we had to be patient outside of, sorry, outside of possession. And that's hard. And I don't like doing that at home because I think our home fans want us to be on the front foot. They want us to be pressing. They want us to be aggressive. They want to see goal mouth action. And then on the whole, we've done that. So for me, there's there's a tick in the, in the home form. But I've been pleased. We won eight league games away from home. That's 24 points on its own. If there's anything I'm, I think would improve us dramatically is seeing two undefeated Altrincham turning into a 1-1 or a 2-2. 
to a point at Old Trinium or a point, you know, on the road on numerous occasions where we've lost by the odd goal, that's something I will be looking to improve because it's only a small margin that you think, oh, it's only a point, you know, but no, it's not because that we only got three or four draws on the road. And two, I think, or maybe even two or two or three. And I can remember two of them were three, three, you know. <laughs> so, you know, I, I want a one, one. I want a, I want a nil, nil away from home. That's for me, will be an improvement for us. So that's, that's my next focus thing. Well, I know you've said all season the only important game is the next game and we don't look too far ahead. But I guess get the uh, good news out of the way that you've you've extended your contract up to 2026. So just, you know, firstly, what, what are your thoughts on that one, Tommy? I mean, it's, it's, it's great news, isn't it? Well, I'm delighted. I mean, the chairman came to me the other day, as you know, and um, asked me if I was happy and felt that I, I think... I, he thinks I've felt I've done what my remit was given to me at the beginning of the season. Um, I'm I'm happy with the, my work conditions. I'm happy with the group that I work with, the staff that I work with. And obviously, I've had chats with every player now, just the last one just this morning because he couldn't make the meetings on, on Monday at the club. But every single player that's played for us this season, I've been really grateful for the effort and the, and the dedication they've given. Some have been really unlucky with injury. Some have been out on loan more than they played with us, but they made contributions on the training ground and around the group. They've all been supportive. And, and the fans, the fans have been brilliant. We've had a really, in my opinion, has our season been successful? If you ask me to say yes or no, I would say yes, it has. Because, you know, like I said, before I was here is irrelevant to me in terms of results, but, but the experience isn't irrelevant to me. I know what people were going through. I've been at clubs as a as a as a player, and I certainly was at a club as a youngster that forever underachieved. But this time, I I believe we've given people an expectation. Now, what their individual expectation is, is absolutely entirely up to them. Opinions or opinions are, you can have one, I don't have to listen and believe it's the right one. My opinion might be different to yours. But what we have done, we've raised the bar of expectation. Now, if the group stays exactly the same, I would understand that. But the group will change. There are players that we've <clears throat> made offers of contract to for business reasons, because that's what we have to do. There are offers of contract that have been made that won't be signed because that player will test the market or his agent will, and they'll think, you know what, I've done really well here, I'm going to go somewhere else. That's acceptable. But <clears throat> as you're well aware, and everybody else who's listening to this is aware, our recruitment process is a fluid thing. <clears throat> we haven't stopped playing football. Thought, right, who are we going to sign if he leaves? And who are we going to sign if he leaves? All of that is very, very much under control. Um, we've even shared that with the chairman. <clears throat> and obviously, Terry, I and Jamie are very, very comfortable with the targets that we have. Um, they're obviously tiered in terms of if this player stays, then we don't need that one. We need that one. Or if this player goes, we would really go after this one. But all of these things are in motion, as football is, like I said, a fluid thing. Um, and we're in a good place. I think before, well before the end of the playoffs, um, we will have we will have news, hopefully on players who we've offered deals with who have been part of the group, but also possibly on deals with players who are coming from outside the group. Um, it's always disappointing when players go, what ones that are leaving, let me make this clear. It's not been me or the club saying we don't want you. Some of the players who have been here a while have decided to leave. And I, as the manager, have decided it's possibly the right thing for them to do as well. And I want them to have the best opportunity to fix themselves up. So to let them do that now rather than hold them to ransom with a contract offer is not the right thing to do. They've earned the right to move if that's what they want to do. So that's something I want to make, make clear. The club haven't kicked anybody out in any way, shape or form. Every every chat I had with a player that we were releasing or we were allowed to run out of contract have been very amicable. And already I've had phone calls and, and messages from managers and recruiters from other clubs asking me for numbers of the lads, certain lads that have that have um, been put on our, our retained list as being released. So like I, said, I hate this time of the season for that one day that I had experience on Monday. It's great saying to the lads, we want to extend your contract, we want to continue working together. <clears throat> but if the decision is one where that player is deemed surplus to the requirement, 
then that conversation is very, very difficult because I've been asking that lad to give me his absolute all for the last 10, 11 months. And he has. And I and I fully understand it's hard. Football's blooming hard. And um, I'll help every single one of them as much as I can with my contacts um, to fix themselves up if they need help uh, going forward. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, regardless of the squad, it's it's definitely a lot of optimism to take forward into the next season, isn't there? I mean, you don't have to be too specific with it, but have we got <laughs> are some targets in mind for next year? Is it is it keeping more of the same going? Well, I think because we've we've done what we've done this season, we've raised the bar quite significantly from probably where it was expected to be at the beginning of the season. Now, because the distance or the quantum shift of where we finished this season to last season is dramatic, I can't see there being the same amount of improvement because, you know, if that was the case, we'd end up in Chesterfield's boots. And look, I want to be in Chesterfield's boots, but... but it, with all the short colours on, obviously. So from that from that point of view, we want to improve us as a group and we want to improve the football club's situation as a football club. Like I said, when I walked through the door, my, my job as the manager is is not just picking the team and, you know, looking animated on the side of the pitch of the weekend. My job is a lot more in-depth and behind the scenes. And I think that's, that's part of what I do. I'm... In conjunction with the club, is probably the big difference or the big change, in my opinion. Hence, the want or the you know the keenness for us to the, the club for me to sign a long contract, which I'm absolutely com- comfortable doing. That also gives me the scope to give players longer contracts because if the football club employs the manager, in effect, the manager employs the staff and the, and the players. So if if it was to go really belly up, and I've put 12 players on two-year contracts, which I haven't, but if I had, then the club would be very tied to me if it wasn't working. So I completely understand the mechanics of what's going on and why, but I'm very, very comfortable. Uh, my, me and my family, we love the match day experience at the club, but I love the, I love my job. I, you know, I'm a lucky guy. I do, I do a job of work that doesn't feel like work because I love doing what I do. So I go to work every day enjoying what I do. We've got a great facility, Gordon School, We've got an excellent stadium. And like I said, the match the experience is as good as I've experienced in the last few years, to be honest with you, at this level, certainly. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. What I am looking forward to is a break. But even when I'm on my break, I'll be taking my phone and my, my laptop and I'm contactable from all the staff. So the staff... We'll all have a break. The players will certainly have a, you know, done time. Um, but I'm away for a few days and coming back to go to the playoff final. Um, and then I'm going away again after with the the missus to, to put my feet up for a couple of weeks somewhere. We don't know where yet, but we, we, we will certainly have some done time before we return to train on the 1st of July. <laughs> 